So we have a couple of announcements this evening. The Recreation Department is holding a community outreach meeting on Wednesday, April 26 at 7 p.m. via Zoom to present the Nor Norcross Park <laughs> Inclusive Playground Project to be voted on at town meeting. Project and meeting information can be found at tinyurl.com slash Norcross Park Playground. The Town of Grafton is proud to introduce its first townwide curbside composting program in partnership with Black Earth Composting. The first 500 residents who sign up will receive a free composting starter kit. Visit grafton-ma.org <coughs> slash 855 slash composting for more information. Uh, first up on the agenda, we have a couple public hearings. If you don't mind reading the notice for the Class 2 auto license. The Select Board will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, April 18, 2023, to hear citizen comments on the application of Anderson Maria Saldana, Trade Auto Sales, Inc., for a Class 2 auto license located at 21 Shrewsbury Street, North Grafton, MA. The, begin the meeting begins at 7 p.m. in Conference Room A of the Grafton Memorial Municipal Center, located at 30 Providence Road. Remote participation may be available, and the meeting link will be posted to the April 18, 2023 agenda. Interested citizens are invited to attend the public hearing and to offer any written or oral comments. Written comments must be received by noon, Wednesday, April 12, 2023. Grafton Select Board published in the Grafton News, March 30, 2023, and April 6, 2023, as well as the Town Bulletin Board. I can take a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion will be seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Declare the motion carried. So we are now officially in the public hearing. Do I have anyone here or on Zoom that would like to speak to this? Is Maria on Zoom? No. Oh. I am her, her husband, Anderson. Would you like to come up to the mic and introduce yourself, please? Yes. <coughs> Hi. Hey. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Anderson. I have a deal in Wooston. And uh, it's a kind of high street. And I, I rent a place in Grafton. I spoke to the owner before I, before I signed the contract. He says it's not going to be a problem to have a dealer here move to Grafton. And uh, that's why I'm here to get approved to you know, run my business. I have a family, two daughters, and uh, that's why I'm here. I never participated in one meeting like that, but uh, it's the first time. I'm kind of shy here. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> All right, does the board have any questions? Anderson, are you um, anticipating any uh, changes at all to the existing business? <clears throat> no, no, I own a gonna resell uh, buy cars and resell yep. cars i have my mechanic in Worcester. okay i'm gonna do all the service in there and I bring the car to to the parking lot then i resell the car only this i'm not gonna fix or change oil in there okay got it thank you all right any <coughs> other questions or comments is this the location where there's currently a car shop was before yes is, okay uh, just so I know, yeah, okay. great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, administratively, on page six of the packet, uh, it looks like the last, one of the last pages of the application, it just, it doesn't have a signature on there currently. I don't know if that was part of our, um, you know, pre-packet or what, or if that affects anything, but I just wanted to flag that. Uh, no, you're still, you're still good. You can vote tonight, and if that is an issue, I will have uh, that cleaned up thank you all right so this is a public hearing does anybody in the audience or on zoom like to speak to this 
Okay. No man on Zoom. All right. Um, I can take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. I move the board vote to approve a class two auto license for Anderson and Maria Saldana of Trade Auto Sales Inc. located at 21 Shrewsbury Street in North Grafton. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Declare the motion carried. Congratulations. Good luck with your business. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. very much. I have to stay to the end or? Nope. <laughs> but you can. You're more than welcome. <laughs> take, it's not required. Take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> take me with you, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, have a good night. Good luck. Yeah. We do have a second public hearing for a poll petition by National Grid on Institute Road. Do we have anybody on Zoom for that? No. Okay. So. Move forward. I think so. Okay. The select board will hold a public hearing on the request of National Grid and Verizon New England Inc. for permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures, along and across the following public way. <coughs> Institute Road. National Grid to install seven JO poles on Institute Road and remove two JO poles on Westboro Road, beginning at a point approximately 40 feet north of the center line of the intersection of Institute Road and continuing approximately 1,000 feet in the south direction. Install seven new poles with three anchors and guys. Replace two poles, two anchors, and one pole-to-pole -pole guy wire. The, the public hearing will be held on April 18, 2023, in Conference Room A of the Grafton Memorial Municipal Center, located at 30 Providence Road and via Zoom starting at 7 p.m. The Zoom link will be posted on the a April 18, 2023 Select Board Agenda. The purpose of this hearing is to provide an opportunity for public comment. Any wishing, anyone wishing to may attend in person or via Zoom. Grafton Select Board, posted to the Town Bulletin Board, as well as the Grafton News, March 30, 2023, and April 6, 2023. And I move the board, open the public hearing. Second. Motion being second. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the public hearing open. We do not have a representative from National Grid. Is there anybody in the audience or on Zoom that would like to speak to this? Okay. Does the board have any comments? All right. I can take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. I move the board vote to approve and sign the Institute Road Poll Petition by National Grid. Second. Motion made and seconded. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. Um, up next are appointments, and we have first the Veteran Advisory Committee. We have Richard Kierjik. If you'd like to come up to the microphone, please. <laughs> How are you this evening? Um, marvelous. Excellent. So if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got interested in being on the Veteran Advisory Committee. Uh, I was, I was uh, contacted by one of the members on the committee now telling me that there was an opening with, with Jim's passing. And I'm a veteran, and, uh, and I just thought I, it would be good. I've spent 30 years on the Board of Health, and... and uh, so I kind of miss coming here. <laughs> <laughs> Understand that feeling. <laughs> All right. Does the board have any questions or comments? No, thanks for your continued service, and you're always welcome, whether you're on a board or committee or whatever. I'll watch it on TV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. All right. I move the board vote to appoint Richard Kierjik to the Veterans Advisory Committee. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Polis declare the motion carried. Congratulations. Thank you Thank very you. much. Have a great day. You you too. Too. Up next, we have the Grafton <coughs> Housing Authority tenant seat with David Callahan. Good evening, all. Good evening. How are you? Hi, David. I'm well, thank you. Apparently, I've been selected to be the tenant rep for Grafton Housing Authority, which they had never had before, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was the only one that applied for it. So, <laughs> so here I am. Did everyone else take one step back? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be meeting with Amanda Brady at 1 o'clock Thursday <clears throat> to go over my duties and responsibilities. Wonderful. And uh, I look forward to doing it. I mean, I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm going to find <laughs> out, you know. I don't know if you guys know or not, there was a small fire on Snow Road 
somebody threw a cigarette butt last week into how dry it was, mm -hmm. and into the mulch, and it, the vinyl fence melted, one mm -hmm. piece of it did. Mm -hmm. So you drive by and look, you wonder why it's not there, that's the reason why. <clears throat> but I've lived at uh, 11, 11 D Snow Road for the last six years now, mm -hmm. and I'm familiar with a lot of the people, I don't know all of them, it's impossible to know them all. And I, I kind of keep an eye on what goes on, you know, I don't, I'm not a rat, I'm not going to report somebody, <laughs> but there, there are you know, some violations that I see that need to be corrected, you know. All right. Other than that, you know, I'm here. <laughs> great. Right? Sure, you're going to do a great job. <laughs> Does the board have any questions or comments? No, just thanks for stepping up. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Huh? Thank you for stepping up. Oh, you will. We appreciate yeah. it. <clears throat> I was kind of surprised when I got it in the mail, and I was even more surprised when Lisa Kelly told me, you're the only one that applied for it. <laughs> Out of all of, all the Grafton housing, that's a lot of housing, <laughs> you know. Could, I, mean, I got a question to ask, maybe you can't answer it. There's a, there's a construction project going on on Institute Road. Now, I always thought that was state land, right across from the state hospital. Apparently, I was wrong. No, the state has been divesting of property. Oh, okay. So okay, I was just yep. curious because I went by it today, and it seems to get bigger and bigger every time you go by it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, yeah. I don't know how many units are supposed to go in there, but it's definitely going to affect the the fire and police department and the schools. So that's something you know the taxpayers have to think about. You know, whether they have a say in the matter or not is another story. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, do I have a motion? Sure. I move the board vote to appoint David Callahan to the tenant seat of the Grafton Housing Authority. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. Congratulations and best of luck. Uh, well, thank I don't you. know if congratulations is the right term, but I'm going to try and help. That's all I'm going to try and do. Excellent. And thank you for your time. That's all we can ask. Thank you, thank you Mr. Callahan. So up next we have ZBA alternates. We have a three people looking to fill this spot. So we will start with Jiffy Thomas. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Same drill, just introduce drill. myself. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, I'm a resident in, uh, off of Adams Road. Uh, we moved here around 2017. And uh, I just happened to be looking in the town website and I saw this position. Thought I would uh, contribute, help in some way. So here I am. Very nice. Any questions or comments from the board? Are you familiar with ZBA, um, like their their charge and their purview, kind of what they do? I've read up a little bit on it, but I'm uh, kind of new to the entire process. But that's where I wanted to volunteer my time and learn through that process too. Okay. Yeah, it's a good place to start. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I appreciated the notes in his resume. It seemed like, um, you know, you mentioned both the ZBA and the planning board um, and having some experience in reaching out for, you know, a personal projects. So it was um, good, good background info. Thank you. Just want to give something back to the town. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. Up next, we have Nicole Berger. Okay. Moving right along to Beverly Gosselin. Nobody's on Zoom. Nope. Okay. Um, so the way we typically do this is we interview candidates, and candidates are notified to show up to this meeting. Um, as far as I know, we did not receive correspondence from the other two applicants that they would not be here. Um, keeping that in mind, I can take a motion. I move the board vote to appoint Jiffy Thomas as an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Declare the motion carried. Congratulations. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for serving. Up next, we have uh, Conservation Commission, Emily Hertzfeld. Uh, yep, let me just. Hey, everyone. I'm... Oh. Hi, Emily. How are you? We can hear you. Good, how are you? <clears throat> Any chance you can turn my camera on remotely? Oh. We're going to promote Emily to a panelist, and she should be able to turn the camera on. Hey, 
everyone. I'm Emily Hertzfeld. I'm sorry I'm not there in person. My schedule just made that hard tonight. Um, I've been in Grafton for about two and a half years. I live on Elmark Drive and uh, really care about how what we can do to um, take care of the earth since it's our only planet and how we do a better job of taking care of our conservation lands. So I thought I would volunteer for this role. Very nice. Thank you so much. Does the board have any questions or comments? Love to see people passionate about it. So, absolutely. All right. Well, hearing none, I can take a motion. I move the board vote to appoint Emily Hertzfeld to the Conservation Commission. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. Congratulations, Emily. Thank you. That was easy. <laughs> Thank you for serving. <laughs> absolutely. Have a good night. You too. Uh, we have some town administrator appointments for cemetery caretakers. I move the board vote to affirm the appointments of Scott Hutchins and Christopher Alex as cemetery caretakers for the town of Grafton. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. All right. Um, up next, we have one day, two one-day beer and wine licenses for Apple Tree Arts. We have Miss Spinney here to go over both of those. Is there anything? In part anything particular you'd like me to say or just introduce both of them, give a summary? Yeah, you can promote okay. each event, get everybody excited about okay. it. Okay. The first event is on um, Thursday, April 26th. It's one of our renters of the facility. As you know, the Great Hall is available for rentals. Um, this is one of our renters and through our events director, um, they have asked to serve beer and wine at that event. It's a um, psychic who's coming to the Great Hall. Um, and uh, so it looks to be a good event. And so they're just looking for beer and wine that night. Um, do you want me to move on to the next one? Or? Sure. OK. So the next one is the full bar license. So all alcohol license. It's for the Great Hall Gala, which is Apple Tree Arts' biggest fundraiser of the year. It's our fourth annual Great Hall Gala. This year is themed Welcome to Bourbon Street. It was the event that we tried to have in 2020 and were shut down a few days before we, we were able to have it. So it's back. This is, um, so we had it, um, 20, we started this event in 2017 and we're excited to finally bring it back. We have live music, um, including a brass, a Bourbon Street Brass Band, um, The Violin Cat and Stephanie Sarkeesian. We have hors d'oeuvres, we have desserts, we have, um, of course, we're trying to get the, the open bar and all the catering is by Pepper's Artful Events. So we also submitted along with the application for the one day um, alcohol permit, their license. Um, so they'll be putting together the bar and serving um, at this event as well. Um, and we have a big silent auction with about 40 great items for that. And it's gonna be a fun event. It's April 29th. Um, Starts at six for anyone who bought, bought VIP tickets, and we still have general admission tickets available as well. Um, by either you can either get them online, find our Facebook page, nudge me, or um, you can call the Apple Tree Arts office at um, 508-839-4286. Awesome! Thank you so much. Does right. the board have any questions about either of those events? All right, hearing none, I can take a couple of motions. I move the board vote to approve a one-day beer and wine license for Apple Tree Arts on April 26, 2023. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Declare the motion carried. I move the board vote to approve an all, a one-day all-alcohol license for Apple Tree Arts on April 29, 2023. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Hope you Thank you very successful much. events. Hope to see you all there. Um, up next is to review the article submitted by Citizens Petition. First up is Article 34, Resolution in Support of Changing the Flag and Seal of Massachusetts. Hello. Hello. How is everybody tonight? Good. Great. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you. <laughs> um, my name is Chantel Kimball, 5 Bigelow Way. Um, first up, I want to just say thank you very much for the time tonight to kind of get this warrant article out there, get some feedback before town meeting. I know your agendas are pretty full and your calendars are pretty full, especially this time of year. Um, in short, Article 34 acknowledges the history of colonization and genocide here in Massachusetts. It spells out specifically how this history is clearly and intentionally represented in our state seal and subsequently on our state flag. 
and it calls on our state leadership to move forward with the creation of a new state seal and state flag. The specific language of the resolution was developed with the input of current tribal members, um, very specifically Brittany Wally, who's a member of the Nipmuc tribe and also on the special commission evaluating the state seal and state flag, um, revamped the language a little bit to make it Grafton specific as well. Um, so we have had all of that feedback. Um, there's a ton of information available on the topic. Um, and I find it a little overwhelming to try to figure out like how to bundle it in a small enough package for this kind of a, a forum. Um, so I do definitely want to make sure that I lead and finish by providing some additional sources where anyone who's interested can get a little bit more information. Um, so the first is changethemassflag.com. There's a lot of um, easy to digest information diagrams um, and videos, including some uh, native voices that are very powerful. Um, the second uh, invitation I'd like to extend is to the public meeting at Grafton Public Library, which will take place on Monday, April 24th, 2023, at um, 7, from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Um, and we will have um, one of the coordinators of the uh, Change the Mass Flag project there presenting um, that evening and answering questions. Um, he's in a lot of the videos um, and, and a very moving speaker. Indigenous leaders have been calling for this change for over 50 years. For nearly 40 years, there have been efforts in the state legislator, legislature that have stalled out repeatedly without really moving forward. Um, finally, in 2021, the legislature overwhelmingly approved a bill to establish a special commission, um, and the commission includes legislators, historians, um, and representatives from the Nipmuc, Massachusetts, and Wampanoag nations. Um, and this commission has been, was first charged with evaluating the state seal to determine whether a change was needed, which unanimously they determined it was, um, and then to recommend a new design. Um, that said, there have been some delays along the way. Initially, they didn't have funding, then they got a little bit of funding to hire a designer and do that kind of work. Um, and then, but by the time they got that funding, then their charge expired. Um, so at the very end of March, I think it might have even been March 30th or March 31st, um, the deadline was finally extended. So now they're just in the process of kind of regrouping um, so that they can do that next phase, that design work. And they have a new deadline of November 15th, 2023, to make final design recommendations to the legislature. Um, given the fits and starts that this initiative has already experienced, um, the this resolution and the reason for bringing it to town meeting at this time sends a clear message to our state leaders that the town of Grafton supports this change um, and to really push them to continue this forward momentum. Um, 57 communities have already held formal votes um, in support of the resolution and approximately another two dozen, including Grafton, have similar votes sc scheduled this spring. Um, given that the land now known as Grafton shares such a long history with the Nipmuc tribe. It feels especially important to honor them by adding our voices to the many in support of this important change. Um, so just to remind again, uh, we will have that informational meeting on April 24th, 7 to 8 30 at the library. Um, and I'd like to leave you with a thought that um, I heard in one of those videos on changethemassflag.com. Um, it was expressed by Brittany Wally. She did it way better than I can. Um, but basically, if we really all take a few minutes to think about what Massachusetts means to us, what are the special things about our state? What are the really great things about our state? And what do we want people to think of when they see our flag, when they see our seal? I doubt that our history of genocide and colonization are like, the things that that come to mind. Um, and it's time for new imagery that really helps to celebrate what we are proud of. Um, and more importantly, sort of the things that unify all of the diverse people here in Massachusetts. So with that, thank you for your time. And I'm happy to try to answer any questions you might have. Thank you for coming in. Does the board have any questions or comments? Thanks for um, organizing the informational session. I think that's really important. Um, and I, I think, you know, overall, I, it's a great, 
I'm generally a little bit on the fence with resolutions because I'm never quite sure. Sometimes they come from organizations that I'm not that familiar with. And <clears throat> But um, this is a great one to partner with other towns to give the state a very clear message um, of what our expectations are. So thanks for organizing it. Any other questions or comments? Great. Thank you so much. Look forward to town meeting. Um, Article 35 will be passing over. The petitioner will not be attending tonight. And up next is the land acknowledgement. What about the clerk? We had early voting with the town clerk. It's, it's not oh, blue. Oh, it's not the right. So sorry, Candy. Up next is early voting with the town clerk. Yeah, he glazed right over that, huh? It would have been a good segue, but mm. that's all right. Hello again. Hi. <clears throat> so I'm not sure um, if Dan is on uh, Zoom, but uh, Dan yep. said he was going to be part of this too, if we can make him accessible. So I'm just here with an update um, from the last meeting uh, that we discussed uh, the local election and the options that we have. And um, it was mentioned that the board would like us to consider um, early voting, which had to be recommended by at least two registrars. So we held a meeting on the 13th and after long discussion, thorough discussion and um, you know, hearing input from others, the board has recommended not to have early voting for the local election for this year. Um, we can get more into specifics if you want. Next year being a presidential year, we're going to have to offer it anyways for the all the elections. So after hearing um, you know, a couple of people speak and just going over information that, you know, we, um, you know, uh, collected like for mail-in voting from past elections and, and whatnot, the board decided not to hold that. Okay. Is mail-in voting considered early voting or not? Kind of. It's no excuse voting. So it's, it, it's absentee voting in Massachusetts. You have to have certain um, reasons to do that. So this gives anybody the option to vote no matter what. So they can just apply for a ballot and we'll mail that out to them and then they can go and, you know, return that at their leisure before um, 8 p.m. on election day. Okay. So that will still be yeah, available. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, typically would the timeline have been the registrars met prior to coming to select board versus like, did we just do it backwards this time where you came to us and then... No. So what happened is we had a registrar meeting before I came and uh, we discussed it as a group. And, you know, I recommended looking at data that we should just do the mail-in voting, being a local election and listening to what other towns were doing. Most opted out of mail-in voting and actually a few opted to do neither. So looking at our trends, you know, mail-in voting seemed to get the more uh, turnout for people. So the registrars were like, all right, whatever, you know, you recommend and, you know, discussing it. Then I came here and that's when the board was like, no, we want to see, you know, early voting as well. So I had to have another meeting because the new legislation said that at least two of the registrars had to recommend it. So we had to hold another one. And now I'm back following up. Okay. So with the follow-up, do we have the ability to push forward anyway or no no, no. okay mm -hmm. any other questions or comments <coughs> no i mean i'm disappointed but i understand it was three to zero was the vote right so <laughs> yeah yeah i think at this point the uh you know the the work is to make sure that it's properly messaged so that people mm -hmm. understand exactly and, mm -hmm. and you've always been yep. good about <clears throat> advertising that but uh, that's that's important this year yep so we discussed it um you know today was kind of a busier day and being the first day back uh from um the meeting so we're gonna draft something to put out there um for everybody so they know what their options are and you know just you know we're there too if anybody has questions but um the local election has not had early voting in general it was mail-in voting the last time anyway so this will you know Honestly, there's no consistency with that anyway. So next year, like I said, with all the elections, we're going to have to do it anyway. So it makes more sense to, you know, do that. And then timing, it just, it was a little uh, crazy timing wise going back and forth, to be honest. So so we didn't do early voting last local election? It was mail-in only. In, oh, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So was that in, was something we discussed. We did, it was in person as well, though. There, the, for other Dance. elections, yes, we did, but we we did not. The, this was, 2020 was the first year that we had the uh, mail-in uh, the local elections, and it was mail-in only. 
But we opted. 2021 and 2022 had early voting at the local elections, correct? No. 2022, last year, we, I don't know, I don't have my data with me. I didn't bring it this time. I'm sorry. Um, but no, it was mail-in only. We didn't have any. Um, those were all the other elections that we had. We had to have it. So oh. I believe I, I have the data. So okay. I, I think after Wait. looking at it, 2022, we did not have it in there. If I remember, it was just the mail-in voting again. So, of course, I'm not prepared, so I'm sorry. No problem. I think but, that was why we were yeah. excited for it, because we wanted consistency. Yeah, right. But now you're saying that it was we weren't. Yeah, mailing. Yep. No, we didn't have it. It was mail-in vote. <clears throat> Excuse me, mail-in voting. There we go. <clears throat> mail-in voting. Um, so it wasn't. That's what we did. Because I think we had the option uh, to do mailing or nothing, and we did the mail-in. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I would just say, as clear as you can have it on the website because yeah. I feel like I was looking mm -hmm. even at it and wasn't entirely clear. So what so we might bullet them do, you know, yeah. you can, mm -hmm. anytime you want, you can come up and get a ballot or whatever the mail-in process is and then go on to the next one. I think we talked about that because the state um, drafted a new, I'm sorry, a new um, application as well, where it can be the whole family on um, one ballot or one application. So there's the regular one and then that one. So we discussed that at the meeting too, where there's a couple options mm. um, that they've tried to make it a little more, I guess, streamlined. So um, we're, we'll probably just make like, um, I don't know if we can just maybe do like a tab or something on the front or something where it's just like early voting information, um, mail-in voting and whatnot and, and give all the options. So mm -hmm. we'll be discussing that. But we did say that we wanted to, um, you know, get as much information out there as possible. And so we will work on something. Okay, great. Any other questions or comments? Thank you so much for coming in. All right, that was easy enough. <clears throat> and I will be in touch. Thank you. Candy, I just have a question. Sorry, yeah. I wasn't sure what else. Um, on the so last time we voted on an interim registrar, right? Yes. And my understanding is that's an issue, or that's still the, we're working on the terminology. That. Okay. Yes, we're working on that. So I think we're just waiting to touch base with Ginny. Okay. So yep, we'll be we'll be back on that. And then so. we would potentially revote that with the correct yep. terminology. Yeah. So the deadline for the Republican Town Committee is April twenty eighth. So for them to um, submit names. And I think that they have at least one person interested. So we'll figure, you know, this week, I hope to, to finally get in touch with her and, okay. and get that squared away. But more like the gentleman that we appointed, mm -hmm. the, terminolo the terminology yes. that we used was incorrect. It, so I believe so. We might have to mm -hmm. change that. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't think we will have to change it. No. Well, you voted to have it expire on May 2nd. Your next meeting is May 2nd. All right. So it'll work itself out. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and we were able to have our meeting, so yeah, we yeah. Candy had come to me that that, <coughs> that morning. That and, yeah. person wasn't there though, right? Correct. Anyway, yes. so that kind of yeah. works. Out we, as well. well, we decided to go that route, okay, because of the issue that was ra raised okay. regarding mm -hmm. the language. Okay. so it was just <coughs> just better to we had Candy had quorum anyways, so right. mm -hmm. it it turned out to not be necessary. Yeah, okay. so so we'll figure that one out though. All right, thank you. Up next is land acknowledgement. Yeah. So uh, as I, I shared with the rest of the board, um, or I shared with Amber, who shared with the rest of the board, uh, we have the final feedback on our proposed land acknowledgement. And I passed along some of the messages I received from both Cheryl, Cheryl Holly and Jennifer Vickers, who we worked with on, on both pieces, um, you know, locally and, and uh, representing the National Nipmunk Group. Um, so I brought it back, <clears throat> excuse me, with, um, with the amended edits that were suggested. Um, as I noted, Ms. Vickers also suggested that we share, she, she provided some language, but um, the gist of it is uh, kind of a summary of how we work through this process as a board when, before we present the acknowledgement itself, um, you know, a, a note about how the, the reflection that went into it um, and, you know, the, the personal feelings and what we learned along the way, which I thought was um, worthwhile if, if the board's open to that, um, just if only because we have a, a larger audience at town meeting um, that may not have been along with us throughout this process and, and be fully aware of what went into it. Great. Any questions or comments? 
Okay, so is everybody comfortable with the language as is and moving forward with reading it at town meeting? Yep. Yep. Fantastic. Should we nominate who would read that? Because personally, I would feel really comfortable with uh, Andy. Um, he spearheaded a lot of this to to get to read the first one at town meeting. Second. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, so do we need to take an official motion to uh, accept the language for the land acknowledgement? Sure. Uh, I move with the board vote to accept the land acknowledgement as amended. Second. Motion being seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Declare the motion carried. Thank you guys for letting me read it too. Appreciate yeah, no, that. Of course. You did a lot of hard work. Uh, up next is close and sign the town meeting warrant. Move with the board vote to close the annual hold town. On, hold, oh, hold sorry. On, hold. Do, we wanna, sorry. So do we want to review any of it? Does anybody have any questions? feel pretty good about it okay how does the so who comes up with the consent agenda like which articles get William and I okay um, and then kind of not not related to the work per se but the um, the clear gov tab or on the website mm -hmm. is that live and bringing people because I just noticed in the Finance Committee report it specifically mm -hmm. you know yeah. said that that's successful to everybody and yes. that is yeah okay been up for I tried three, today and I couldn't get three through months. I will double check be on in case mind. there's a okay an issue that we're not aware of but it has been live just in live. reading their report it led me to go ahead and give it a try and yeah. I wasn't successful okay that's all I have thanks I do know that the, the uh, people have been accessing it because they've been telling me <laughs> that they're accessing it okay here we go and I can pull it up after and see yeah. if it's something on my end. Thanks. All right, any other questions or comments? And also, can you amend your motion to close the warrant and vote to sign? Sure can. <clears throat> can you get I move the board vote again? to close the town, the annual town meeting warrant and sign uh, for our meeting on May 8th, 2023. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? No. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. Do we have any select board reports? Moving right along the town administrator reports. Okay, here we go. All right, so budget process, you just kind of wrapped it up right there. Um, finance committee hearings, we've completed those as of last Thursday. Um, we did receive new information regarding the cherry sheet, so the house budget increased um, graft and share by roughly 80, 88,000, somewhere in there. Um, we'll wait and see what the Senate's come back, uh, Senate's comes back as. Um, so without that 88,000, our Current capacity is 133,000. Reminding everyone that that is with our uh, low uh, estimates for revenue, um, and reminding everybody that we have the logistics meeting May, April 26th at 7 p.m. and that'll be via Zoom only. Um, should be pretty short. We've worked out most all of the logistics uh, already. Okay, so I wanted to talk about pickleball for a minute. This is a this is a hot topic. It's at least half of my inbox these days. Um, but I wanted to thank the rec department. So the rec department's been doing a ton of work, um, and the response they have gotten has not been the most pleasant always. Um, a lot of the emails, I, there was a few emails last week that asked why the project of redoing the pickleball courts was so hush-hush and done behind closed doors. Um, so I just wanted to talk about what rec did for this particular project. So um, they sent out 5,700 emails on two different dates. Um, of those 5,700 emails, 70 people took a short survey about what they'd like to see for Grafton Pickleball. Um, they discussed the, the changes to the Pickleball uh, courts. 
at Rec Commission meetings. They've been in our weekly reports. They've been on Facebook. They've been on a website, on a project page. It has its own page that uh, Jen created that, that actually came out very nice. I, I like it. Um, and they put signage on site. And so they're making some some changes to the layout and the number of courts and, and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, I'm not a pickleball person, so I don't know all of the ins and outs. I know that there's an issue with people having concerns about sidelines. Um, and so Jen has uh, been reaching out to people individually to try to get some input and consensus because uh, in, in theory the project's supposed to start next week. So, um, you know, we have uh, the contractor lined up and, and <laughs> like all these things in municipal government, if we, if we miss our window, then we don't know when we come back up in the queue. Um, but I did just want to give a shout out to the recreation department. They've been doing uh, a ton of work in general. Grafton Recreation does a heck of a job for, for the number of people that they have and the human capital. See, bringing that up again, mm -hmm. um, that they're, that they're able to, to utilize. So, um, you know, just really want to highlight their their efforts and also uh you know just say thank you in general nice they were doing the sweethearts dance last week mm -hmm. yep. um so that was pretty fun uh i got to hang out with them a little bit while we were talking about pickleball so um but yeah they're doing great things sorry well go ahead rambling um so other updates so we had received some um some complaints near the prentice uh place construction um, about water on the two properties that are below Prentice Place. Um, after some review, I participated in a site walk with uh, Mr. Knoyer, our engineer, um, and Mr. Berger, and um, we were able to actually work with the Grafton Water Department, and we believe that the issue is actually a um, break out in the street. Um, for their water line that goes to an existing building. So uh, we believe that that's pushing um, potable water into the ground, which is then seeping up behind the two two properties. Uh, we believe that one, because uh, Grafton Water District uh, personnel can hear that there is a, uh, a break somewhere. Um, and when we tested the water in each of those properties, it tested positive for chlorine. So it seems like that is what the issue is. Um, so um, looking to get that resolved by hopefully Wednesday or Thursday this week, and that should take care of a lot of the, the issue or at least shift our focus into what else is happening on that property. Um, we met with the paving contractor last Monday to review the Municipal Center parking lot. Uh, we're hopeful to have all of the project information uh, by the end of this week. And... Uh, fingers crossed we would be paving in May at some point. Um, so uh, di I did that walkthrough with uh, Paul Knoyer, Brian Zazurko, and Shannon from the Senior Center, Shannon Smith. Um, and so we're going to put a couple of drainage improvements in, and we're going to widen the parking lot in a number of, of places to try to get a uh, better turning radius behind the Senior Center as well as where the parents park at the top of the hill here to just make it a little bit easier to navigate. For people um, we're also gonna choke down the spots around the speed bumps for the people that drive straight across the lawn so that they don't have to go over the speed bump so I'm gonna make that a little more interesting for folks um, <laughs> big granite curbs what are you gonna do no we're doing it, it's a Cape Cod berm okay which I just learned what that is it's just an asphalt hump sure. they just fancy it up um, but yeah now that yeah it's just it happens quite a bit you look out the window and somebody's Real close to the building. Um, mostly Matt, but we'll let it go. <laughs> um, all right. So I held uh, office hours at the Senior Center. Uh, it was a little slow this month, but we were able to uh, to solve a couple of issues for folks. Um, I, that's literally my favorite part of the whole month. Um, I, I, I uh, helped a, a woman get a pothole filled in front of her house, which is what we, we do, but she was super happy with it so that's always fun um will attended the dull men's club um i was supposed to go but i'm not dull enough so we mm -hmm. said will you want to talk about that will it was not dull it was very exciting 
but it's a group of older gentlemen who meet at the Phoenix Center uh, every other Wednesday, I want to say, and just went down, spoke to them for about 45 minutes about various projects around town, and they were very appreciative of the one-on-one -on -one interactions. That's cool. Awesome. You want to talk about the MVP grant? Well, that was more dull than the Dull Men's Club, <laughs> but... Uh, so we had our first meeting with Fiona, Paul Canoyer, and myself to talk about the MVP grant for George Hill Road. We have a pretty good plan of attack, I think, and we're pursuing that aggressively because the deadline is coming up rapidly. Um, but I, I have high hopes about that. I think we'll be able to get the application in on time. Right. And I attended the Mass Chiefs annual trade show. Well, before, before we move on, um, is there any impediment or anything that might be a blocker? To get in that in on time? Uh, just the fact that it is a massive grant application. Yeah. Um, and we have the 20% plans, the 10% plans? 10%. The 10% plans. Uh, and so we're not sure if those are going to meet the specifications of the grant. Um, we're not sure if they want the full completed designs or if the 10% plans will work. Um, so, so small things like that. But we are proceeding as though we have everything we need because we figure worst case scenario we get everything in on time and, you know, they gave us a short extension to do something else. Got it. And we can always apply next year. You, you can. Um, it's just such an important part of the financing for this project. I agree. I think that um, from what I've seen in the past, they will give you a grant with the 10% plan uh, with the caveat that you have to bring the full plan back um, to just make sure you remained within the project parameters. Um, so I, I don't, I don't see anywhere where that has, that has changed, but either way, we, we are not going to have hundred percent plans by May 4th sure. so, or even 70 or 90. So, okay. um, we're going to do what we, what we've got to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I attended the mass chiefs annual trade show. Uh, that is a trade show put on geez, man, by the mass chiefs, obviously. Uh, it's basically, uh, all the cops, uh, new technology, um, different cars, different kinds of lights. Um, met a guy that designs bike frames that I hike with in Munson that I didn't know that's what he did. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty random. Um, but it was, it, it's a, it's a good show. Um, Deputy Chief and Chief brought me along because I'm the money guy. Um, but, but no, it was, it was really good. There, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of really neat technology around active shooter, active shooter training, um, and, um, virtual training as opposed to live live training so it was pretty pretty neat that a lot of vr type type setups um and just just need to see what's going on in that particular realm and lastly we got our draft for the deni audit today uh it's a little rough will and i have some work to send to send back uh the data is all good um, but being a company that works throughout the United States, they use different language than we use in Massachusetts. So we've got to do some, some cleanup uh, on things like that. So we're going to work with them to try to polish that up and hopefully be able to get that out uh, beginning of May-ish, second week yeah. of May. Aside from that, any first impressions? Um, it's both surprising and not surprising Okay, <laughs> is, is how I would put it. So... Um, surprising, some of the numbers surprised me Grafton specific, but wouldn't surprise me on a national trend level. Um, I think that, uh, you know, some of the things I was happy to see was job satisfaction levels mm -hmm. that are just kind of the baseline questions of a DEI audit, um, as well as, um, you know, how safe do you feel in your workplace? Uh, do you, do you feel like equity is an issue? Um, it's, it's interesting, and, and, and I think we'll discuss this more in detail, but I think it's interesting to ask a group of non-minorities whether they feel that diversity is a problem for them in the workplace. And, you know, if 90% of your workforce is Caucasian, then that number is going to probably be 90%. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have, to, we have to look at that data through the lens of, what we currently have for um, a min minority workforce and whether all of that data makes sense to, to use as your as your springboard. 
that makes sense. Sure. Um, so, but and it's also interesting because we got department specific data, not municipal departments so much, but police, fire, municipal center, uh, library, um, schools, and schools. Um, but it's kind of interesting to see those different um, silos that exist and, and the lens of diversity that each one would, would look through. Um, so it, it's going to be good. I, I'm excited to to uh, take what we can from the data and, and make some changes here to to implement some uh, some better practices. Great. Good. Well, that sounds okay. well worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It, we, I only looked at it for 30 minutes today, sure. so I'll have more in depth as we move forward. Um, and then Main Street update. So folks have been asking what's going on with the Main Street project. Um, so the Fisherville Terrace uh, project that is up on the hill off of South Main Street with the drainage issues, if you recall, that drainage work just started today. Um, and that is independent of the Main Street work. Um, so they, they have to get that done before the state comes through. Um, the contract for the rest of the project, um, they should be uh, the, the timeline I was given was any day. So they are mobilizing. They had projected not starting uh, for another couple of weeks due to winter conditions and just the general climate of Massachusetts. But, uh, you know, it's been pretty nice. And so they're going to they're gonna get an early jump. Um, that project is probably still on track for late summer uh, into the fall for final completion, which is the original timeline that was discussed. So they're removing all the trees that they did in front of South Grafton Elementary. That's for the drainage, not for the Main Street project. I believe so. Okay. Yep. Um, I, I will double check that just to make sure I'm not erroneous, but that's my understanding in that location, yes. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of retaining wall work and work in front of some of those those people's homes. Um, and that, that should start up mid to late May, depending on schedule. So, um, yeah, you're going to start seeing a lot more work down there again. Um, just one more year to get through, and I think it's going to be a, a beautiful end result. Mm. So um, largely, we're looking to wrap that up this year. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Yep. Good. Exactly. The one other thing I did not put in here um, is that there is um, some construction work done around some of the memorials, war memorials that we have down there. Um, that is all slated to be done before Memorial Day. Okay. Uh, so the, the Perkins, who is the contractor for the state, is well aware that there's observances that take place. Um, and that that needs to be a priority, and, and they've told us that they'll they'll be able to wrap that up. And that's all I got. Awesome. All right, uh, on to correspondence. Does anybody have any correspondence they want to talk about? We don't have any resignations. Anybody here for public comment? All right. Guess it here? Sure. Oh, thanks back is killing me ed prisby 25 daniel drive um so this is the second time i've come to conference today to talk about the warrant article about affordable housing and the second time no one's been here to talk about it i understand um that uh, nancy piconi was at fincom and the, the week following she was supposed to be there and i wasn't able to meet that one um but i just want to say to you guys as matt knows um it used to drive me nuts when something would come before the board that was ostensibly a priority of the town and the board would be silent on it at town meeting and that happened in 2014 with the override where again you know ostensibly education is a priority in the town and nobody was willing to publicly support the override it happened again in 2020. Um, i would suggest to you that this particular article is again a place where this board needs to exhibit some leadership here um, you know, the trust has existed since 2007. It has, every single time it's been in this conference room, faced any number of obstacles to get affordable housing built in Grafton. Try as it might. Um, the idea that replacing it with something nebulous, something else that doesn't yet exist uh, is, is both naive and foolhardy. The trust exists by a creature of statute and it is somewhat controlled by this board whoever gets on it you know gets appointed by you guys it's funded by the community preservation act overseen by the community preservation committee 
replacing it with anything else is replacing it with something where it could exist for a moment, it could exist for a year, it could exist for a day, who knows. And it would have to have an amazing private funding source because it can't get CPA funds. So dismantling the Affordable Housing Trust, it would be a death knell to the efforts of public interest in affordable housing across the town, which is unfortunate. A third of Grafton residents presently are housing insecure, meaning a third of Grafton residents are presently paying more than 30% of their take home income for housing needs. Add on to that people who would just like to live lives without wondering month to month where they're going to be. That's not even housing insecure. That's just life, right? It used to be that Grafton was a town of about 10,000 residents 25 years ago or so. And during the eighties and nineties, it went through an enormous housing boom. If you look at the data that the Massachusetts housing partnership provides, and it's right on their website, Grafton basically shut down housing production after 2010. And since then, we've been kind of plugging along a few developments here, a few developments there. And as a result, the people who moved into town in the 80s and 90s and bought into an economy where you could get 2,800 square feet of a colonial for $200,000, now see their property values at $750,000, right? And an entire generation of people has been priced out. For the first time ever in Massachusetts, 30% of the homeless population is families with kids. Now, when I was growing up, what I understood the homeless population was, well, you know, those are people that are unfortunate. Maybe they've got mental health needs, whatever it is. But the kids with the families, you know, those are people that are priced out at the bottom. It's not that they're not working hard enough. It's not that necessarily that just they don't have social services that could help them. These are families that have been priced out of the bottom of the housing market because we get no place to put them. Because all we're doing now is we're building bigger homes. And why are we building bigger homes? Because that's what's economical for developers. Because the land's expensive, because we've got it, that's how we've got it zoned. Single family zoning is exclusionary zoning. And we talk a lot about the flag and the seals on the flag and what that means symbolically, actually speaking, if you're looking for social justice, if you're looking for economic justice, if you're looking for environmental justice, higher density developments are where you want to be. It's easier to fit 160 units on six acres of land, for instance, than it is to find 160 acres of land to put single family houses on. And it permits economic diversity in your town we had the Dukakis study, the EDC commission back in 2016. One of their findings was, and underrated, we never talk about it, Grafton needs more workforce housing. And again, try as we might, we had GSX, right, up on Pine Street. I'll tell you, until I see a shovel in the ground, I never believe it's actually going to happen. You know, those guys are going through some tough times, as a lot of construction firms are. But the only consistent advocate for affordable housing in this community is the Affordable Housing Trust. And right now we're on the verge at 25 Worcester Street of providing for senior housing. I hope that GSX can come through on up the street. We're gonna underwrite those guys. You take that away, there are hundreds of units that we could lose by taking away the Affordable Housing Trust. So I hope that when town meeting comes, that this board will advocate for the trust and publicly state that this is the goal of the community to provide for this kind of housing, for that kind of economic need, and for this population that so needs it. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brisby. Thank you. Do we have anyone on Zoom or anybody else in the room that would like to speak to public comment? No hands on Zoom. Okay. Uh, we have no meeting minutes and no reason to go into executive session, so I can take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Declare the motion carried. Good night, everybody.